I'm Chris Drysdale. We're here at Rocky Mountain Equipment. Today we're going to talk about AIM Command Flex spray systems and spray technologies using IsoBus. So we're here at the back of the sprayer and I just wanted to point out a couple of the IsoBus nodes. We have our product controller here. We have various other nodes with our uh, Ultra Glide node, our AccuBoom node and our, uh, and our frame node. As well, while we're back here, we do want to look at the NCVs or the solenoids. These are really the ones that actually perform the magic for our spray systems. With Pulse technology, we can actually have a duty cycle of 10 times a second, and that's actually how we can control our rate separately of vehicle motion. So if we're here in the VT screen, this would look identical whether this is a Viper 4 or if we were actually running in a Pro 700. We have our standard spray Raven screen. This would be for our AIM Command Flex. Up on the top left, we have our rate controller, and this is where we would select our, our desired rate. In the middle, we have our speed and our sparge settings, as well as on the right-hand side, we have our pressure gauge. This is where we would pre-select our pressure. In the middle, we would have our alarms, and if we touch this, we would have any diagnostic trouble codes or DTCs, we would see them listed. We hit back, and that would take us to the main screen. We have our tank here, which we would fill, and then our section status. Over here on the right, we have our pump control, we have our presets for whether it be our pressure or our rate, depending on which one we've touched, it would allow us to change each one of those on the fly. We also have our settings where we would change our pressure presets, our product controls, recalibrate our NCVs, and then look into the diagnostics of each solenoid. Over here on the left hand side, this would show anything that is connected to the ISOBUS system. We have our Raven control, we also have our auto boom, which is where we would enable it, change our sensor and our center or outside rack heights, as well as we also have our auto fold connected where it shows the readouts of our potentiometer settings. And just to run through our calibration of our solenoids, if you ever had to change one because it was a uh, bad coil or if one actually stopped communicating, or if we had one that needed to be replaced or unplugged at any point, we would then come in here, go from our home hit the gears, come up here to the system settings. There's a tractor with a gear, we'll touch that. We see the calibrate NCVs, touch that. You will see the calibration, are you sure you wanna calibrate? Hit yes. We'll see the node actually stop responding and reset. You'll see it disappear from plugged into the VT. We touch it again, it comes back and it is now auto detecting our current configuration. Whatever is hooked up to the ISO bus will automatically reload each time and we'll just wait for the wizard to finish and then you will be able to index. What we're doing when we're indexing solenoids is each solenoid actually has its own circuit board on it and its own unique ID. That's how we're actually able to index from one left to the right to give us our section control as well as our turn compensation. So now the calibration wizard has actually detected that we have 72 nozzles, which is correct. We have a left count of 36, and obviously that would mean that we have a right count of 36. So if at any point we didn't see 36 nozzles, we could go back and double check that all of the NCVs have little LED lights on them and that they're communicating, and then hit retry. Once we do see our full 72, we'll hit the next page, and it will ask us if we want to begin auto indexing. We'll touch that, and then it will index. And how it does it is it indexes from left to right, but it actually indexes from the center out. So once it's done the left circuit, it will then start with the right circuit. As soon as it sees all 36, it will actually create our implement and we're ready to go.